Hi everybody, once again it is your AP Biology teacher Mr. Poser. Um, today this is going to be our second video in our series on the AP Biology Science Practices um, and the main focus of today is we're going to be talking about Science Practice 2. Um, in our last video we discussed what the actual AP Biology Science Practices are, which are basically like what is the AP Biology exam going to be asking you to do um, with the knowledge that you gain throughout the AP Biology course. Um, what are the six skills that they're going to be assessing and how are those questions on the AP exam going to be kind of framed? Um, how are you going to use your knowledge for that? Okay, or this is or like how is that measured the skills that you need? All right, and uh, we talked about science practice one which is concept explanation just like why is this the way it is? Describe this pretty straightforward um, knowledge-based questions. All right, so uh, we're going to get into science practice two which is kind of similar um, and science practice two is visual representations. Analyze visual representations of biological concepts and models. Okay, so a, a model is kind of a, well, it's a, it's a representation of um, some kind of process, right? It could, be a, it could be something not just in science, it could be in social studies, it could be in whatever, okay? or especially math, of course math. Um, but a model kind of represents our understanding of how something works in the natural world, right? And analyzing that model means it basically interpreting that, what does it mean, okay? My, my kind of definition of analysis, um, or the word analyze, is to break something, break something apart, or one big concept apart into smaller pieces, figuring out how those smaller pieces work and putting them back together to gain a larger understanding of how a whole process works, okay? And that's what Science Practice 2 is going to be trying to ask you to do is is analyze um, visuals, all right? So these visuals could be a picture, they could be a diagram, um, graphs are gonna be coming up later on, um, flow charts, all sorts of stuff. All right, um, so 2.A is describe, or the sub, as always, there's gonna be sub practices within Science Practice 2. Uh, so 2.A is describing characteristics of a biological concept process or model represented visually which is the, almost the same thing as 1.8, except we're using, once again, visual representations here. Um, so it's going to be kind of like the which is, what is type questions. Um, 2.B is explaining relationships between different characteristics of biological concepts, processes, or models represented visu visually. And again, if this is looking familiar, it's because it is. It's the same as uh, 1.B and 1.C, um, except it's, these are visual representations. Again, so it's going to be um, like a drawing or a graph, something like that. Okay? And there's uh, two sub points here that um, you're going to have to explain relationships between characteristics, so on and so forth, in theoretical context and in applied context. Okay, so um, there might be some kind of example or some kind of experiment um, and a, a graph or a visual that goes along with it that they're going to be asking you to explain. All right. Um, the last two por portions of uh, science practice two is 2.C, explain how biological concepts or processes represented to visually relate to larger biological principles, concepts, processes, or theories. Okay, so how do, uh, how do certain processes relate to bigger concepts in um, biology? Okay, and again, represented visually. Um, and then 2.D is represent relationships between biological models, including mathematical models, diagrams, and flow charts. Okay, so this actually 2.D, they're going to ask you to visually represent something. Instead of showing you a visual representation and explaining what that means or describing it, it's going to ask you to make it. All right, so there actually are no multiple choice questions that are going to be uh, asking you in category category 2.D um, because you know you're going to have to actually make something. All right, so this is going to be part of an FRQ. All right, but let's get started uh, with 2.A. All right, and uh, you know, again, it's very similar to 1.A. Describe characteristics of a biological concept, process, or model represented visually. And here's an example of a multiple choice question. All right, here's a here's a visual representation of well, crossing over, conjugation, and fertilization. And uh, they're asking you to know what uh, what these three basically have in common. The processes illustrated in the models depicted above all result in which of the following? All right, and again. I'm going to be keeping these questions up here, so if you want to pause the video, try it for yourself, or try to figure out figure it out right now while I'm talking. Okay, I'm going to show you the answer in a second, um, and that would be an increase in genetic variation. All right, so knowing what these three things are, okay, you could, even if they listed them out, it would be the same thing, but it counts as a 2.8 because it's represented visually. You can see 
uh, the two bacterial cells and the, the chromosomes crossing over and the sperm and the egg, that kind of stuff. All right, but um, yeah, that's 2.8, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and here's a 2.8 FRQ, okay? So this is talking about acetylcholine receptors. Um, here's a visual, this is a, this is a data table, okay? As a result of some kind of study um, testing acetylcholine um, and nicotine, those two, uh, and how they affect muscle contraction. All right, so describe, again, there's a bolded word there, which means it's gonna be one point um, for this question and describe the effect of inhibiting acetylcholinesterase. All right, so um, yeah, you know, same kind of thing, um, using this to determine what acetylcholine has, uh, what, how that affects ACHR and nicotine too. So again, here's, if, I mean, it would take a while to go through the, the answers to FRQ, so I'm gonna move forward with that, but. Again, these are FRQs in 2.A. All right, so here's 2.B. Um, explain relationships between different characteristics of biological concepts, processes or, processes, or models represented visually in theoretical or applied context. Okay, so here's a multiple choice question. Um, and, whoops, hang on. Hey, uh, it is you know asking you to make an explanation based on a visual like this. All right, so here we have a flow chart. Um, and this is relating to how the hypothalamus, um, and this is showing a feedback loop. The hypothalamus releases uh, TRH, activates the anterior pituitary gland, which um, activates TSH, activates the thyroid gland, hey, and then there's some feedback loops going on here. So it says the diagram illustrates feedback control as exerted by the hormone thyroxine following surgical removal of the thyroid gland. The level of TSH in the blood will increase. Which of the following best explains this increase? All right, so once again, this is asking you to, um, this is showing your understanding of feedback loops um, based on your analysis of this diagram. All right, so you'd have to take this apart and kind of figure it out um, what's going on, okay, and how it relates and we'll pick the option that makes the most sense. And if you want to pause the video here to try and answer this yourself, go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so D, a decrease in thyroxine means a loss of inhibition to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary, leading to increased TSH secretion, right? So you can see that um, if this decreases, there's less inhibition, which means there's going to be more of this TSH, right? So you got to kind of follow the graph, one piece at a, or the flow chart, one piece at a time in order to answer this question and explain. All right, so that's two point B. Um, here's two point B as a FRQ. All right, so once again, we have a data table um, and this is a theoretical or applied context, right? So these are the results of a genetic cross. Um, ex again, explaining relationships between different characteristics, models represented visually, and here's our visual representation. Um, so we would be asking for this question, determine the genotypes of the parents and explain your reasoning. You may use Punnett squares to enhance your description, but the results from the Punnett squares must be discussed in your answer. Hey, something uh, that's very, very important, if you don't already know this, is that, you know, for FRQ questions, you actually have to write incomplete sentences. Um, not all of these are going to, well, for, for everyone, okay, you have to write incomplete sentences, um, unless it's like 2.B, where it asks you to specifically draw something. Um, so, like, for example, it's saying you can use Punnett squares, but you can't just have the Punnett square as your, as your answer to this type of question. Hey, but you will need Punnett squares, um, and you will need to uh, be able to tie that into the results of the study and this representation, this visual representation. All right, uh, 2.C, explain how, uh, excuse me, biological concepts or processes represented visually relate to larger biological principles, concepts, processes, or theories. And I know this is really, really small, um, but what we're looking at here, hey, um, well, you can see this is a uh, electrophoresis gel, okay, or like a you know, representation of an electrophoresis gel. Um, and it says, the diagram below illustrates the results of electrophoresis of DNA sequences obtained from a family of two adults and three children and amplified using PCR. The bands represent short repeating sequences of variable length. Results for another female are included for comparison. Um, all right, so you got to figure out basically, okay, this is, this is PCR um, and the concept of, or excuse me, electrophoresis and PCR kind of, um, but you got to figure out, okay, how does electrophoresis, okay, and the results of electrophoresis relate to um, genetics here, all right? So you got to figure out, based on these four options, the banding patterns of the DNA fragments reveal that. Um, pick the one that um, is most, you know, most accurate based on this visual representation here. Um, and this relates to, okay, 
how do um, how do genes get passed down? Um, how do certain fragments of DNA and uh, the what are those called? Oh my goodness, the oh my goodness, I'm gonna come back to it. Um, how do the lengths of the fragments indicate uh, relatedness? Oh my God, restriction sites. Yes, restriction sites. Okay, um, how are those related to? Um, genetics. All right, so 2.C, go ahead and pause this if uh, you're going to try to answer this question. I know it's a little small, but you, hopefully you can uh, zoom in a little bit. Hey, but the answer would be C, the mother cannot be the biological parent of all children. Hey, because check it out, here's the, here's the mom, here's the child. Look, they've got some matching fragments here for child one and child two, but not for child three. Um, and these other ones, if you go through them one, one at a time, neither of them make sense except for uh, C. All right, and then this is also 2.C, explain how uh, biological concepts or processes re represented visually relate to biological principles, so on and so forth. Um, this is their FRQ, and this is pretty straightforward. Describe what is occurring in population during phase A. All right, so you'd have to write what is happening during phase A. Well, it's like experiencing exponential growth, and yeah, the rate of the population growth is increasing as well as the population, right? So you can tell me all about that. All right. Um, Cool. So yeah, this would be telling me about, all right, how, what is this? How does it relate? And then there might be some follow-up questions like, okay, what could be happening in this environment that is causing uh, this type of growth um, in phase A? All right. Um, and then 2.D, last uh, sub-practice in this video that we're going to talk about, represent relationships between biological models, including mathematical or biological molecules, including mathematical models, diagrams, and flowcharts. I'm going to show you two examples here. Um, in just a second, okay, but then they're kind of big, okay, so I tried to make them bigger on the screen so that everybody could see. Um, but this is, like I said, these are FRQs. They're not going to be any multiple choice questions, and they're going to ask you to, uh, like, draw or actually make a vis visual representation yourself, okay? So here's an example of something that you might see. Here's a phylogenetic tree of different polar bears. Here's um, amino acid differences in the lysed protein among bear species, and you'd have to read this. Um, for context about um, what those proteins are, okay? And then, check it out, like I said, construct a cladogram on the template um, to represent a model of the evolutionary relatedness among the bear species based on the differences in lice protein, or L-O-I-S-T, I should say, protein sequences in table one. Circle the position on this cladogram that represents the outgroup, okay? So based on this visual representation up here, and then this table down here, you're going to have to make your own, okay, for this, uh, for this question. Hey, and I didn't include the template of the cladogram, but you would be given a template, and then you'd have to circle the out group, right? So like I said, you can't really do a multiple choice question for this type, um, because it's asking you to make a visual representation uh, of what you're seeing. All right, and here's another one. It's a little smaller, okay, and uh, this is about uh, meiosis, the pro possible for four possible normal products of meiosis um, produced by the F1 progeny, okay, and it describes what the F1 progeny and the P progeny, uh, excuse me, parental generation are all about in this text up here. Show the chromosomes and the alleles they carry. Assume the genes are located on different chromosomes, and the gene for flower color is on chromosome one, okay? So uh, it's asking you to build or diagram or represent visually, okay, how those genes are going to get passed down and how genetic variation is going to be increased through meiosis um, based on this text up here and based on this visual representation up here. Okay, there's chromosome one, there's chromosome two. Show us what you know. All right, uh, so that's science practice two. Hopefully this helps clarify uh, what types of questions are going to be on the AP exam. We're going to get to science practice three in our next video. Have a great day.